to the Rachel Carson Reserve. Pick your path and discover what our island has to offer. Stay alert as you follow the trail. You never know what you might find around each bend. You may come across animals you recognize, like the many shorebirds that live here, or take a walk in the marsh and see the island from the perspective of a fiddler crab. Each step is a new opportunity to explore, and it's important to be prepared and stay smart. There are just a few things to keep in mind as you head out on your path. If you encounter a horse on the trail, remember that these are wild animals and have been known to kick or bite if they feel that their space is invaded. Keep at least 50 feet, the length of a school bus, between you and any horse. This space will help them feel more comfortable, and you'll have the chance to take some great photos of them acting naturally in the home they've created on this island. If you've brought along your dog, make sure it's kept on a leash so it doesn't disturb the horses and the horses don't hurt it. There may be times when the horses are in the trail or you come upon them around a turn. Just back up slowly and give them their space as you go around them, and they'll move along. This estuary and reserve will allow you to experience a diverse array of habitats and the plants and animals that call each home. It is our job to keep this area as natural as possible, so remember to carry out what you brought to the island, and if you see something someone else left behind, take a minute to pick it up. Many plants and animals have found ways to protect themselves using spines and sharp edges, so make sure your shoes will protect you from oyster shells and sand spurs. Ready to go? Follow the paths marked by posts with either blue or green tops, and prepare for new discoveries. This stop is where you, the explorer, can choose the route you will take. The markers with the blue tops indicate the outer loop, which heads off to your right and wanders along the outskirts of this island, Town Marsh. The outer loop is approximately one mile long with seven podcast stops. Along this path, you will be able to explore many of the different habitats found on the island. You can observe oysters and crabs in the salt marsh, spot birds along the sandy shoals and mudflats, and look for signs of foxes and rabbits in the upland grass and shrubs. Be prepared to tromp through the mud along this trail as you follow the path from sand to marsh and back up into the center of the island. Take note of where the tide is, as this trail is most enjoyable at low tide. If you would prefer to stay high and dry, you can follow the markers with the green tops off to your left and get a feel for the interior of the island. The habitats you'll see range from upland grass and shrubs to upland forests. This trail is also around a mile long. There are three podcast stops along the inner loop. Regardless of what trail you choose, be sure to bring plenty of water and take the time to find some shade and contemplate what you've discovered. Before heading on your way, take a look to the right across the waterway. You will see a number of prominent marine research facilities which use this island as an outdoor laboratory. The Rachel Carson Reserve has opened up the aquatic ecosystems of this island to you as well, and opportunities to make new discoveries abound. The salt marsh ahead of you and the estuary and waters that flow among the grasses create the perfect home for oysters and other small creatures, such as crabs and fish. The mixture of salt and fresh water found in any estuary allows these organisms to flourish. Oysters are filter feeders and act like a vacuum to suck nutrient-rich water through their system, feeding on microscopic plants and animals. While feeding this way, oysters can also absorb pollutants, cleaning the water. Although oysters are delicious and often considered a delicacy, their role as natural filters can make some oysters dangerous for humans to eat. It is very important to only eat oysters harvested from clean waters. Water quality is closely monitored where oysters are harvested, and visitors interested in harvesting their own shellfish should check with the NC Division of Marine Fisheries to determine what areas are open. Oysters do not only help to clean water, but the reefs they build also protect coastal towns like Beaufort during hurricanes by slowing down the powerful waves. How oysters build these reefs is fascinating. Oysters' offspring are microscopic larvae, that float around in water until they land on hard surface like stones or other oyster shells. Once they land, they are known as spat and will begin to grow a shell, helping to build the oyster reef like the one you see below. As you walk to the next marker, keep an eye out for crabs and other small wildlife you may not notice regularly. They all play an important role in this complex ecosystem. As you walk these trails, you walk in the footsteps of the wild horses that live here. Although horses weren't originally found on this island, the trails were created by the horses that were brought here, and they still use them today. 
From where you're standing, you can see the salt marsh cordgrass below. The grasses on this side of the tidal creek are regularly grazed, and you can see how much shorter they are than those across the creek. The horses don't like to cross the creek because they have been known to get stuck in the soft mud. As you walk, keep an eye out for other signs of the horses such as tracks in the mud, horse droppings, and trails through the tall grass. Horses have left their mark all over this island. You may even find that some of the trail markers aren't straight. The horses like to use these posts to relieve an annoying itch or two. If you encounter a horse on the trail, remember to give them their space and enjoy the chance to see them going about their daily activities. As you keep walking, don't forget to keep an eye out for tracks in the mud. You'll likely see hoof prints, but you may also see the prints of raccoons, foxes, sea otters, or rabbits. Take a look around and notice how the plants growing in the wetlands near the water are very different from those growing in uplands towards the center of the island. Close by, you can see patches of dark brown and green grasses that are three to five feet high. Touch them and notice the sharp, needle-like tips. That's how they get the name needle rush. You may also notice low plants just a few inches high with succulent segments that hold fresh water. They are usually bright green, but can be red in cooler months. This is called pickleweed, or glasswort. A hundred years ago, almost all of the island would have been low, marshy wetland like where you are standing. Beginning in the early 1900s, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers started dredging sand and sediment from the bottom of the waterways in order to maintain passage for boats. The deposited sand and sediments make up the uplands of the middle of the island. Fast-growing plants, such as grasses, quickly colonize and stabilize the newly created land. This process of succession is followed by a progression of herbs and shrubs, and finally, shrub scrub and maritime forest habitats that you can see beyond the needle rush. Wetlands not only play an important role in providing homes for a wide variety of plants and animals, as we've seen along this trail, but they also play a direct role in our lives and the lives of those who live near them. The abundance of wildlife provides opportunities for fishing and hunting, and the unique attributes of wetlands allow them to filter out pollution and return water to the groundwater supplies we depend on. Don't forget to keep an eye out as you walk and do your part to keep this ecosystem free of trash. This spot provides a great view of the mud flats and the sand ridges called sandy shoals that you can see beyond them. You may see different types of birds out feeding among the mud and grasses or in the edge of the water. The important ecosystems found at Rachel Carson are protected by a state-federal partnership between the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and the North Carolina Division of Coastal Management, which work together to provide access to the public and research groups, while keeping the island wild. Out across the inlet, you can also see two other examples of protected land. To the right is Fort Macon, which was primarily used for the protection of the inlet during the War of 1812 and was abandoned shortly thereafter. About a hundred years later, Congress gave the fort and surrounding land to the state of North Carolina to be used as a public park, and it soon after became North Carolina's first state park open to the public. If you have the time, you should visit Fort Macon, where you can see what the life of a soldier was like during the War of 1812, as well as hike, fish, and swim. If you take a look off to the left, you can see Shackelford Banks across the inlet. This island also has wild horses, and loggerhead turtles frequent the island in spring and summer to lay their eggs in the sand. Because Shackelford Banks is a part of Cape Lookout National Seashore, you can even camp on the beaches there, an activity prohibited here at Rachel Carson Reserve and at Fort Macon State Park. If you've never camped on a beach, you should really try it. Distance from the noises and lights of the town provides a perfect setting for star watching as the sound of the waves lull you to sleep. Information about camping on those beaches can be found on the Cape Lookout National Seashore website. As you continue down the trail, keep an eye out for where the trail splits. You'll see a trail marker with arrows pointing to the right and left. The path that goes straight ahead was actually created by the horses. Isn't it funny how much the trail you've been following looks like that horse trail going straight? Luckily, the island managers have looked at all the horse trails, and they have the best options laid out for you right here. The path to the right will take you out to the mudflats and sandy shoals. The seagrasses you see growing out of the mudflats include eelgrass, shoalgrass, and widgeon grass. These grasses provide habitat, food, and refuge for birds, as well as fiddler crabs, snails, and other invertebrates. They also produce oxygen, absorb nutrients, and help to reduce erosion by slowing down waves. 
The mudflats often provide a chance to spot some of the 200 different species of birds found on the island. And if you take a look down at the mud, you'll see thousands of their footprints among the grasses and mud snails. You may see snowy egrets, sanderling, and willet, as well as any number of other small shorebirds. Even if you can't get a good look at these bird species, take a minute to lean down and charm out a mud snail. If you lay a mud snail in the palm of your hand and place your palm near your mouth and hum, the vibrations from the humming will coax the snail out of its shell. Don't believe me? Give it a try. Once you've charmed the snail out, don't forget to return him to the mud where you found him. Once you're done exploring the mud flats, feel free to take a trip out past them to the beautiful sandy shoals where you can enjoy the nice quiet beach before continuing along the trail. Feel free to lay out a towel and lounge for a while. Just be sure that everything you bring goes home with you. Once you're done enjoying the beach, follow the path to the left, which will take you up to higher ground and more chances to see wild horses and signs of other wildlife. As you've been walking, we've pointed out many native plants and animals around you. At this stop, you can see vines growing in the nearby bushes. These vines are Japanese honeysuckle and are non-native, invasive plants. Although honeysuckle can be attractive and smell nice, it outcompetes native species and changes the habitat. Honeysuckle spreads easily here because it has no natural predators on the island to keep it in check. As it covers and wraps itself around anything in its path, it also changes the type of food and shelter available to the animals that live here. Although most of the animals on the island are native to this area, the wild horses are actually another invasive species. In fact, records show that horses were brought to this island to graze on the grasses in the late 1940s. Even before the 1940s, there are records of tame horses being kept on the island. The iconic wild herds of horses are kept on the island as a cultural resource of coastal North Carolina, enabling us to envision that time. Although the horses you see on the island allow you to see how horses act when untamed by humans, their presence impacts native species that make up these ecosystems. The Rachel Carson Reserve staff actively manages the island to create a balance between the health of the wild horse herd and the health of native ecosystems you've been exploring. This point in the trail may be confusing as it splits to the left. The horses have created a new trail straight ahead, but don't be led astray. Your path moves through the trees to the left. You may notice that your journey has taken you uphill to a new kind of habitat since you first arrived, but that would not have been the case a hundred years ago. The sand you are standing on was placed here beginning in the early 1900s by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, who dredged it from the bottom of the waterways in order to maintain passage for boats. Before that, this area was a low-lying salt marsh with only a few small mounds of land above water level, called hummocks. As the channel slowly fills in over time, the dredging is repeated and more sand is added to the island. The deposited sand and sediments are soft and loose at first and are called spoil. Fast-growing plants like grasses quickly colonize and stabilize the newly created land, making it possible for seeds from larger plants to take root and grow. During this process of succession, grasses are followed by a progression of herbs and shrubs and finally maritime forest habitats. As you walk through the trees ahead, you'll notice the fast-growing cedar trees look like they are dying. This is part of the successional process. A slower-growing oaks and magnolias will soon take this area over. Although this process has taken a hundred years, it could be reset in a day by a hurricane strong enough to clear the sand of its plants. The people of Beaufort are lucky to have this island, as well as the other barrier islands, to help protect the town from a similar fate. Researchers continue to study and learn more about the protections offered by barrier islands. If you are a wild horse living here, where would you go when the storm arrived? Think about it as you continue your exploration of this island. <laughs> this is our last stop with you on this tour, although there is one more stop found in the trail brochure and then a nice walk along the beach back to the start of the trail. Standing here, you may notice the low, spreading tree nearby with thorny branches. This is called the southern prickly ash, also known as the toothache tree for its numbing properties. You are in the elevated upland grass and shrubs habitat that was created by dredging sediment from Taylor's Creek beginning about 100 years ago. This habitat supports many plant and animal species, such as pennywort, beech pea, prickly pear, and cedar, 
as well as animals such as raccoons, foxes, possums, and rabbits. As you've walked your path, you've seen the variety of plants and animals that can make a home where once there was only salt marsh. Did you see anything new? What signs did you see of this abundant wildlife? Although we're glad you've traveled to the reserve today, you don't have to travel to hone your skills as a budding researcher. Keep an eye out for new plants and animals, as new discoveries can be found in your own backyard and walks throughout your neighborhood. Try to observe ways that the ecosystems there have adapted to having humans call it home. As you continue on the trail, you will descend and return to the marsh habitat at the edge of the island to finish your journey. Keep an eye out and see if you can spot where the plants change between these habitats. Thanks for taking us along with you as you explore the Rachel Carson Reserve and enjoy the rest of your visit.